Last week saw us arrive on Cornwall's north coast. With its beautiful town, stunning coast path and huge Cornish pasties, we weren't ready to leave this wild and majestic county just yet. So we carried on west to explore the south coast, where Emily makes some new friends. I'm in between cows, I'm in between cows, oh my god. And we stumble upon what can only be described as a paradise right here in our very own UK. Yeah. How about that for a view to wake up to then, eh? So we are on a campsite. The nearest place is called Treen and we are right on the very south coast, nearly all the way at the bottom of Cornwall. And check this out. Summer's outside, proper Dora. No lead. You're a big girl, aren't you? <laughs> Emily's on with his dinner, what are we having? We're having a little mini roast. Mini? Yes, because I don't have loads of veg. I've got to use up what's in the cupboard, so you're going to get what you're given, I'm afraid. Oh. My word, have we got a spot for you this week. We are just about 100 yards from probably one of the prettiest beaches I've ever seen. Not just in the UK, but anywhere, and it's called Pedden Vounder Beach, and it is absolutely stunning. Countryside, the water so I wait up here, I just let it know. So Emily's busy away cooking, so I'm not sure how involved in the beginning of this vlog she's gonna be, because we all know that when it's dinner time, she's in a rush. When it comes to food, nothing else matters. That is very true. In our household, or our van hold. Is van hold a word? It is. We've just, we've just decided. We're coining van hold. Hashtag van hold. Um, but we've been here for about three days and we wasn't on the campsite the whole time. We stayed just up the road on a little car park in Treen and it's 10 quid a night for 24 hours and you can stay there two nights out of seven. But it is a car park, not a campsite. And as a spot goes, it's bloody awesome. It overlooks the coast. It's about, what, a five minute walk to the coast path from there? Yeah, about a five minute walk and it's a really nice walk as well. Yeah, five minute walk to the coast path that takes you straight onto Pedden Valder Beach and then you can go either way. So just to our right, so further south, is the Minac Theatre, which is a theatre built into a cliff and Emily's already been, so she's gonna take you on that mini adventure in a minute. And then if you keep going that way, it's St. Michael's Mount and we're gonna check that out when we leave here tomorrow. Because uh, tonight we're gonna walk the coast path that way a little bit, because we haven't been that way yet. But that way, if you go past the Minac Theatre, you get to a little cove, can't remember what it's called, I'll drop a thing on the screen, but it, again, it's just like being in the bloody Caribbean. It is so beautiful and one hell of a walk to get there. It's starting. Food makes me so happy. Anything else or just food? Uh, AJ and Summer. And anything else or just AJ and Summer? Uh, the van, travel, being outside. And anything else? Just those things. Snacks, chocolate. No, I'm surprised snacks are so low on the list, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, I was counting that as food, but you know, a little extras. Someone's been sent to the naughty step. What's she after? A crow. <laughs> and it's the size of her, nearly, as well. Uh, I'm watching you. So I won't lie to you, we've not done a great job of the filming here and that's for a couple of reasons. One, they do not like drones, so I'm having to be very careful when and where I fly my drone. And two, the reason we've been here so long is because we've waited for some decent weather because the weather on the Cornish coast can be a little bit intermittent, drizzly, rainy, windy and cold. But today is bloody lovely, so we're going to have our dinner and then we're going to go for a sunset walk, which I'm really looking forward to. The other reason we haven't filmed is because we wanted to spend some time with the animals outside. Summer is very much now in phase two of van cat training, so she's been loving off the lead. And we came up to the campsite just so we had some space where we could let her off, AJ could get out. We've got a couple of events that we're going to over the next couple of weeks that are probably going to keep them in the van. So we just wanted to spend some time, see how she got on off the lead. She's been really good, apart from crow chasing, obviously, which is making it tough. But when we're doing that, I want to make sure that our attention is fully on her because she may, if she gets scared, she may run off and until she's used to it. But she's been pretty good. She generally just stays around the van, like I say, unless there is some sort of crow or seagull. And with all the will in the world, Summit is not going to win against the Cornish seagull. 
So yeah, the car parking train straight down to the coast path, straight onto the beach. Now that beach, as beautiful it is, as it is, you can get on it by foot, but you have to climb down the rock face. And I would love to do it, but every time we've been down there, we've got AJ and it is a steep climb. It does look a little bit dangerous. There's absolutely no phone service down there whatsoever. So if there was, if I went on my own and got in trouble, I couldn't do anything about it. So Emily said, no, I can't go because she is very much team boring. But yeah, it is really, really, really pretty. There's, it's just, I don't even know what the words for it are. It's that beautiful, but you've got the sand, the open stretch of sand, the water is like the, the bluest of blue. And like I say, I've not had the proper light to catch it right, but it is absolutely gorgeous. So if you do ever get a chance to have a, a little look, you need to see it with your own eyes is what I'm trying to say. Right, that's enough waffle. Should we see our dinner's coming? Oh, it looks like we're having Yorkshires. Homemade and everything. No, I'm, I'm like, I'm like Delia, is it Delia Smith? You are just like Delia Smith. Without the boobs. Without the boobs or the height. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it's looking like dinner might be a little while. So why Emily is carrying on doing the dinner, I'm obviously gonna need to put the camera down so I can supervise and help out and make sure it all goes okay. I am head chef in the van. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so while that's happening, we're going to show you how Emily got on when she went to visit the Minak Theatre and your adventure literally started, didn't it, as soon as you started walking down the lane? It did! You need to see it. Here's what she got up to. Genuinely pooping my pants. I'm in between cows, I'm in between cows. Oh my God. Hiya. Hello. Oh, Come on. <laughs> Oh god. Come on. They're big. I used to be kinda sane. I used to act kinda normal. I How do I get past? I just keep walking. I found myself picking pieces and I scared of brain. Look what you've done to me. My insanity. I'm off to the Munich Theatre. I'm so excited. It looks proper cool. But the best part as well is the walk down there from the, from where we're parked. And oh my God, I'm doing the coastal walk and it is so, so pretty. Let me just show you. Also, I always take the mick out of Louise um, and I call her Dora the Explorer because she's always off of a backpack. And then today she's made me take a backpack. Actually. There's a naked man down on the beach. <laughs> about your eyes, people, about your eyes. Um, anyway, I don't think I should walk and talk on the camera right by a cliff edge because I am a, I am a tripper. So yeah, we'll wait till there's a little bit, somewhere a little bit safer, shall we? Flies everywhere. <sighs> right, I'm away from the cliff edge now, so. I thought that I can tell you a little bit about the Munich Theatre. Um, I think it's super cool because it used to be somebody's house. So a lady called Rowena Cade moved here after the First World War and built the house for a hundred pounds um, for her and her mum. And I just think that's like super cool. And then um, over the years, she helped to turn it into a theatre where there was um, plays that used to be put on there and stuff and it first opened in 1930 or 32 and the first play that was done there was The Tempest and it's just super cool right? I love things like this honestly I'm really excited to go and have a look around so this is called Kerno Beach I think that's how you pronounce it and behind me up there is the Munich Theatre but I don't know if you can get up them stairs into the entrance box. So we're going to go the roadway and I'll show you some parking. But oh my God, how stunning is this beach? Let me try and show you how clear the water is. Oh. So this car park is super close to the beach. The trail goes off just down there. Over there are some toilets, some bins, and then this is the parking charges. This is a cash only, no card. Um, it's two pound thirty for up to two hours, five pounds and six pound ninety for twenty-four. But it does say 
no mode homes and campers so yeah it's a good little spot for during the day so it's just starting to rain um to get down onto the beach and stuff and quite close to the minac theater as well but you can't stay overnight though it does say it's prohibited so that's why we stayed up on the hill so this is actually the car park right outside the theater they do have a lot of space but i'd imagine in the summer it will get quite busy so probably best to use that other car park also i just feel that my personal little adventures by myself are way more informative than louise's let me know what you think because i feel that i'm giving you so much information and we haven't even got to the theater yet so yeah let me know in the comments if you like my adventures or louise's This place is so pretty and I think it's just really amazing that this one woman had this massive vision of this house and these gardens and built it all by hand with her and her helpers with like big diggers and things like that and just developed it over the years not only to live in but for the locals to perform in and to just appreciate and I tell you what just sitting here is something pretty special I'm telling you it's amazing some of the stones have got what the performances were that have taken place here and the years that they've taken place as well. The theatre itself is open between April and September and has around 20 performances throughout that time. So to come and have a look around it cost me £8 plus £1.50 booking fee, random. Uh, dogs are allowed here but they have to be kept on a short leash and good dogs as well but it is quite like there's lots of steps and stuff so I think it will just depend on what type of dog you have really. I'm just going to chill out for a little bit and enjoy the view. Quick pit stop to the toilets and then I'm heading back to the van by which time it should be either a snack time or lunch time or dinner time or some sort of food time because all that walking has made me hungry. So let me know who's the adventures you like better, mine or Louise's. I might not be able to give you some fancy drone footage, but I definitely give you better facts, right? That's gotta be up there, surely. Here she is then, Dora's returned. I have done some very good vlogging. They can vouch for it. <laughs> <laughs> is it any good? It was, it was really good. But now I need my donut, please. Thank you. That was needed. I work this vlogging life, isn't it? Mm. I'm glad you accept it. <laughs> Go away. Excited? My mouth's watering. <laughs> you more excited for your dinner or our sunset walk? The dinner. So we are going to eat this and then head off for a walk. One thing I forgot to say about this campsite, Emily will show you around more of it in her two minute tour tomorrow, I'm sure. I'm sure you're all very excited for it as well. But um, it is a tight access road, so there are some size restrictions and it is a bit of a windy road. There is someone on here with a tourer, so if you're brave, maybe you can squeeze up. But yeah, it is a little bit tight, so just bear that in mind if you've got a big vehicle. Emily's given me the evil eye because she's ready to eat. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you in a bit on our walk. Louise has brought me out for a lovely evening stroll to burn off the dinner. I think she's trying to tell me that I'm fat or something. No, you're not. <laughs> But anyway, I just wanted to show you this because I thought it was pretty cool and pretty interesting. It's Logan Rock and it's just by Turin de Nass. Which is an Iron Age cliff castle. <laughs> which is an Iron Age cliff castle, not Ice Age, which is what's in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't give you any more facts than that because Google is not my friend tonight. Amelia, you are one who will survive. So contrary to popular belief, Emily is not a fact-filled genius. 
um, she just Googles everything as we get there to get you your fun facts. Yeah, and my memory's not very good either, so I need to get back into the swing of it, I think. And we're on a cliff edge, and there's another dog over there eyeing up AJ, and you're panicking, aren't you? Yeah, so I want to go back inland. <laughs> Even though we are 900 yards from the edge. Doesn't matter. Ready? He's friendly. Made you jump though, didn't it? Fall over on camera, fall over on camera, fall over on camera. <laughs> it's because you go in front and he's like, where's my adventure buddy gone? Because he knows you're team boring. I'm team adventure. <laughs> you know, you're team sensible and boring. <laughs> One of us has got to be sensible in this relationship. Yeah, that's me. I think I might fall over. <laughs> I'm not the one who spent last month's mortgage money on snacks. Necessities. <laughs> Necessities. <laughs> You know, folks, she puts it in with the household utilities. She's got gas, electric, water, snacks. Cool food. <laughs> no, it's not. So that's Logan Rock just over there. That's where we just come from. You can climb onto it and have a walk around, but Captain Sensible over there said no, obviously. <laughs> Captain status. What are you? <laughs> that's my Captain Sensible. Oh, your Captain status. <laughs> yeah. In a cheeky little stealth camp. What a spot to wake up to though. Look at that. Look at that for a panorama. I mean Emily won't be there in the morning, we're in his view, so that's a bonus. What you saying? I was just saying how pretty you look tonight, babe. I know. Every <laughs> night. You are one lucky lady. Even with the retainers in. <laughs> oh they just they just make it that's an improvement, they are. Yeah. They keep you quiet more. Can't talk as much, can you? No, that's true actually. So, uh, so that was it, we're on our way back now. Um, the sun's gone down and there is a little part of this coast path that's a little bit edgy, nothing major, but obviously while we walk over there is panicking, it's gonna get dark and she's gonna fall off the edge. So we're on our way back. Plus she's sulking because she can't get on Google to uh, get you any fun facts. So she's like, well, if I can't do any fun facts, it's pointless. And I said, people just enjoy the view. But she said, no, I need my fun facts. So we're going back. Just telling them you're in a rush to get back. That. People do enjoy the fun facts. Um, people tell me in the comments, they love the fun facts. It's very, very true. The fun facts are incredibly popular. I like them. You say something nice. <laughs> I just I said something nice. You say something nice back and then we say goodnight. <laughs> okay. So it's very, very true. The fun facts are very popular. I like them. I like them as well. <laughs> and on that note, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> What is it? Twat. Yeah, you are twat as well. I'm trying to stop him from eating poo. So much poo everywhere. Did you put the gate up? No, it's a different gate. No. No, it's the same gate. No, I didn't. Yeah, I came back here earlier <laughs> and while you was panicking about the edge, I run past you, I landed my drone, run past you, I came and fixed the gate and then come back past you to walk behind the collector. Now that is good. I am good. <laughs> Wait a minute, because I think it's going to fall down, I'm going to... Thanks for all your help there. <laughs> I'm filming it in case it falls on you, because that's, that's that, nice. that is good content. An angry Emily is not good content. I don't know, it's pretty popular when you had a right flint at me for eating your chips last week. Yeah, I hope you learnt your lesson. <laughs> That'd be alright, babe. A couple of chips. <laughs> also, one more thing I forgot to tell you before we sign off for the day. If you do keep walking along that way, you'll come to like this cool little village. There's about, I don't know, three or four houses in an inlet to the sea. And what a wicked place that would be to live. Honestly, if you ever get the chance to walk this stretch of coast path, do it, because it is 100% worth it. Now, I'm definitely putting the camera down. Mostly because we're going uphill, and I'll see you tomorrow. Woo! Hi. Are you going to wait for me or what? If I trip over and die and fall off the edge, you won't know for ages. <laughs>
It is an early one this morning because I've got to go back to work so we need to get this done in two minutes because I've got about a minute and a half until I start work so come on let's do it, two minutes more. Yes, before anyone says I am still in my pyjamas, I haven't washed my hair yet, I ain't even cleaned my teeth and she's got me out doing this. But right, let's do this. We are at Treen Farm Campsite. It has a little shop over here. It's £28 a night, non-electric hookup. Um, and then we've got... Shit, that was empty. Sorry, got a little bit put off there. Man coming out the showers, we don't want the same thing that happened last week. Showers here. They are 50p for five minutes. You've also got a microwave toaster in here. There are washing machines and double drying that as well. But there's some cool things here. Let me see who show you. Oh. Look at this artwork. So this is pretty much our vlog on a wall. How cool is that, right? Right, let's do this. You have got your chemical waste over here, wash up over here, men's toilets there, loads and loads of bins. Oh. One cool thing as well is that there is so many benches about. Ladies' toilets. How cool is all this artwork, right? I think it just added nice little bits. Also, the showers are really good, but the toilets do smell a little bit. I don't know why. Um, let's show you some of the power cups. Oh, this is where we're at. Yes, we have been cheeky and got two benches, but that's because there's hardly anybody here. And then, Look, more and more hark ups. So, stream farm campsite, 28 pounds a night, non-electric, 50p for five minutes on showers. Tumble dryers are a pound for 15 minutes and washing machines are five pounds for a load. And I think that's the worst thing that's what I've ever done. I literally woke up like 10 minutes ago, guys, so you gotta give me a break. Oh, I need to get ready for work. Two minutes all out. Right, we are on the move. Um, one thing I want to say about that campsite quickly it is £28 a night, which seems expensive, but for Cornwall, in fact, for anywhere in the UK, £28 a night isn't that expensive this year. And it's just, it's my favourite campsite I've been to in a long time. It's just got this like really nostalgic feel. So it's not your fancy underfloor heating that all campsites are turning into. It's a proper old fashioned, but in good condition with great services, campsite. And I did a lot of camping when I was a kid and I really, really liked it. And location wise, you ain't going to find much better. Um, Emily's working on the go this morning because we're trying to get up to St. Michael's Mount to beat the crowds. But I doubt that's going to happen because, um, well, we're just late. <laughs> well, we're doing our best, aren't we? We are. I'm not really paying attention because I am working. She's busy. Back to work. So yeah, let's go. St. Michael's Mount. So in keeping with Emily's theme of giving you car park information let's go and have a look so the main car park for st michael's mount is over there anything longer than five and a half meters has to come in this overflow car park and there's plenty of signs saying you can't stay overnight so let's have a look at the prices there we go price list so we're probably going to want about three hours four quid that ain't too bad 
there you go smashing out the parking info facts for you she'll be proud she'll be proud i've done my bit and told them all the car park info <laughs> did you get a ticket no i haven't got any money oh you are useless so unfortunately, they no longer allow dogs on the island, but no worries, I've been on it years and years and years ago when you could just wander over. So Emily's gone over by herself. I think it's like 14 quid for the castle, 10 pound for the gardens, five pound to park here, uh, and then two pound 50 for the boat over, because it is tidal. So you can walk there when the tide's out, but you have to get a boat when the tide's in. But that means me and AJ are gonna go for a little stroll along the beach. So I'm gonna be leaving the van in the car park unattended. And this video isn't sponsored or anything by Bearlock, but a lot of you will remember, I know this because a lot of you are asking how I feel about it. And the bear lock, basically, you just stick your vehicle in reverse, grab the key, lock it up, and then your vehicle is stuck in reverse. So what I often do when I park up is I back up to something like a tree or a wall or something fixed and then lock it in reverse. And then at least that way, I know the van cannot be driven away. Now, I do get serious anxiety. I hate leaving the van unattended for any period of time. And the bear lock is definitely helping with that. So, yeah, quick update. Uh, I'll leave a link to a video that we made in the past about it. So if you want to check it out in more detail and I'll leave a link to their website as well because they, they do other systems like a full cargo locking system and stuff like that. So yeah, go and check it out if you want. And our discount code, yes, is still active. So if you mention Camper Vibe, you'll get 10% off. So yeah, me and AJ are going to go for a little wander and I'm going to hand you over to Emily, who I think, I believe, is on a boat. I'm on a boat! I was indeed on a boat. A little tiny boat that was taking me over to St. Michael's Mount a tidal island off the coast of Marazion. They say the ancient market town of Marazion is the oldest town in Cornwall. With its active community of artists, there are plenty of cute shops to explore, and with its long sandy beach, it is also popular with windsurfers and the like. But, where there are windsurfers, there is wind, as you can tell by my hair here as I arrived on the island. People actually live on the here as well. There's like houses behind me, with like proper stuff in. That's mental. Now I couldn't speak too much on the boat because it was a very small boat with quite a few people on and the looks that I was getting were just like awesome, absolutely amazing. But anyway, let's go and see this castle and see what it's all about because it's a nice island so far. St. Michael's Mount is a tidal um, island and you can get here by walking across it but unfortunately I was too late that's why I had to take the boat. So the island is 57 acres in size and it's one of only 43 umbrish islands in England that you can walk to. It's pretty cool isn't it? I don't know what Lou moans about because when she goes on these little adventures and stuff she's always like oh oh I'm so out of breath oh it's so much hard work you have to stop all the time to talk to you lot so she's just lying So the church is actually dedicated to St. Michael and it's still in use. It has Sunday service from the end of May to the end of September and it's a medieval church. It's actually a pretty cool one inside. I like it. So there's actually quite a lot to walk around and see. I only paid for the castle side, I didn't go to the gardens, but I've really enjoyed it actually. And it's just, there's so much in there to have a look at and I couldn't show you everything, but it is actually worth a visit. I enjoyed it anyway. Let's give this a go. In Cornish, it's called Carrick Los Uncos, which means grey rock in wood. I expect I have not pronounced it at all right, but the intention was there. I'm gonna eat my sausage roll, drink my iced coffee, and then back to the van and try and find a park up for tonight. So. Hopefully, she might have found one, but it is Louise. Anyway, bubbles up.
Well, what a Cornish adventure that was. We have found a park up. We are heading out of Cornwall now, and I've got to tell you, the A30 has not improved at all. Got a little bit of waffle for you, but before I go on with the waffle, I just want to say, if you've enjoyed Emily's solo adventures, please give this video a massive thumbs up, because I think you've done really well with the filming in there. I've loved it, actually. I love going on like my own little like adventures and leaving you behind. Of course she does. So yeah, give it a thumbs up if you want to see more of solo Emily, because one, it means I have to do less filming, and two, I get to go and have some time alone. <laughs> um, so I just want to say, we nearly, very nearly didn't share this, not the whole video, but the park up in Treen with you, because um, finding park ups like that in Cornwall is incredibly difficult, and we've seen a few things, haven't we, while we've been there. We have indeed. So they are car parks, they're not campsites, and what a lot of people are doing is they're getting there, they're paying for their 24 hours parking, and then they're putting out their awnings, their windbreaks, setting campfires, spreading out, and the thing is, these places will get shut down, so they'll either get slapped with a 28-day campsite notice, which means they'll only be able to operate for 28 days a year, and before you know it, you're paying 30 quid a night for what you was originally paying £10 a night for, because they need to get their money in that time, or they just shut down, and everyone says, oh, the locals don't want us, and the council don't want us. If the vanners don't treat it right, it's the vanners that are gonna lose out, so please, please, please respect it. One morning, you had to get up and go around and pick up all the poo, didn't you? Yeah, and look, we've got dogs, we've got a cat as well, and I know some dogs go off the lead and stuff like that, and that is amazing, but when they do go off the lead, just have a check of them, because yeah, there was just poo everywhere. Yeah, and there was only vanners in that, so you can't this time say, oh, you know, it's people in cars. It was only vanners in there, it was there for a couple of days, and it was yeah. covered in, in dog doo-doo, so please, please, please look after it, because we was dubious about sharing it, because, we don't want to lose those spots ourselves, so we want those places to still be there and we want them to work so that more of them happen and the councils and the locals accept more of them and they're there for us. So, yeah, that's about it on that, isn't it? It's enough, enough it of a is. rant, enough, enough of a rant. Enough of a rant, enough of a rant and waffle. And on that note, if you are still watching, I'm pretty sure this video is going to be bloody long because we've done quite a bit, haven't we? We have. Uh, so yeah, if you've made it through well, however many, this is probably at least half an hour, and, well you aren't, and you aren't subscribed, then what are you playing at? You clearly like the content, whack the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and ding that bell. Ding the bell and we will see you all on the next one when we've recovered from our Cornish adventure because we're shattered. Yes. <laughs> Bye.